after knowing everything that I've learned in my career at this point, what would I do if I had a team? What roles would I have in place? What would the objectives be? How would I create a team that was efficient and that could run like that, that machine that you want to make you money while, you're, while you don't have to put forth so much effort and you can leverage yourself? I want you to know that this is my life. This is real. Relationships are universal. What is up everybody? Ricky Kruth here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about what if I had a real estate team? Of course, I do not have a real estate team. It's just me and my assistant. I do all the showings. I do all the listing appointments. I make all the calls. I do everything client related. I did a video on uh, the different things that my assistant does um, and she handles all the processing of everything. Okay, so, so that's kind of how we split everything up. I love the people side of it. I love the sell side of it. I want to be in front of people. I want to show the properties, help people find what they're looking for. I want to go to the listing appointments, explain to them, try to strategize based on why they're selling of a good game plan to get their property sold in the time they need to get it sold for at the best price and also go to all the closing. So I'm going to make the appearances everywhere I need to make the appearances and I wanna show properties and do everything that I need to do. Everything that a real estate agent is supposed to do. Um, I said it in the video I did a few weeks ago about team versus single agent. I think that a lot of agents are trying to create a team so they can figure out how to get this team going and kind of create a machine that will run without them. And I think that's a really bad strategy. I think that if you want to create a team, it doesn't need to be so that you don't have to work much anymore. It needs to be so that you can work even harder to push to bring the team to, to better levels and, and help more people create better service, all that good stuff. I think that if you do create a team, it needs to be for the right reasons, which is you're gonna continue working as hard as you can to, to build a team and create a situation where we're helping more people and creating better service. I also talked about in that video how the, the team leader is more of a manager rather than a salesperson. You have to put your sales kind of aside a little bit, um, at least somewhat, to manage the team and help the team. Whereas a single agent can focus solely on their sales and their clients. And that's why I like being a single agent. I love the sales part of it. Now, what I would say most teams are doing, not all teams, but I would say most teams are purchasing online leads. The team leader is buying leads to feed their team members. I think this is the big trend in the industry. The, the big teams are spending so much money on Zillow, Realtor.com, and all the other channels for online leads, maybe Facebook, to get leads for their team to follow up with and try to convert. I actually believe this is a very inefficient way to build your business, very expensive, very low quality leads. I did a video on me trying Facebook leads. I tried Facebook leads for about three weeks or so, um, and the results were that I was just getting random people in my market. Okay, there were a lot of comments in that video. You're not targeting them right. You can actually target people that are, are in the middle of the decisions to buy or sell something, so on and so forth. I still find these as random people, even the people thinking about doing something because if you really think about it, anyone who owns property at all, they're always thinking about real estate. They're always thinking about doing something. Maybe they're thinking about doing something next month, next year, three years from now. They know someone looking. It's a never ending trail. And there's plenty of random people looking to do stuff now. And out of the random people that aren't ready to do something now, you create the relationships for when they are ready to do something and you continue to build your database. So after knowing everything that I've learned in my career, at this point, what would I do if I had a team? What roles would I have in place? What would the objectives be? You know, How would I create a team that was efficient 
and that could run like that that machine that you want to make you money while you're while you don't have to put forth so much effort and you can leverage yourself and there are team leaders out there who do this uh, there were lots of comments on my video about single agent versus team where there's agents out there that work one day on their real estate business make seven figures and they run several other businesses absolutely it can be done the first thing I would not do is buy any leads whatsoever because let's think about it even if on Facebook you can get leads for a dollar let's say you can even get them for 10 cents let's say they're three dollars whatever they are it's too expensive okay Zillow leads they're a hundred two hundred three hundred three hundred fifty dollars per lead per random person in your market you could have ran into this person at the grocery store and, and the next day, Zillow sold you their information for $300. It, does, it makes zero sense whatsoever. The first thing I would do if I were gonna build a team, the first person I would hire would be an ISA. I would have an ISA in place that is strictly there to create new relationships with property owners in the area for me to follow up with or whatever the case may be, but I would have I would have someone in place to create new business just for me at first. I wouldn't try to have any other agents involved in the beginning. I would just get an ISA just for me and have them making calls. Now, what, what kind of calls would I have them making? Well, I'm gonna get Red X Geo Leads. I save $150 with the link below, and I'm going to have them target subdivisions that I want to sell in, and I'm gonna go through all the circle prospecting training that I have provided here on YouTube with them. I'm gonna make sure that they understand the exact philosophies that need to be in place, and what they need to say, what the objectives are, and what we need to do to build those relationships. This has to be a pretty special person. This needs to be someone who is really good on the phone, who's very confident, who understands the big picture and what we're trying to accomplish. The reason that I would do it this way through Red X is because those phone numbers are two and a half cents a piece. So now instead of paying even 10 cents, a dollar, three dollars, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred and fifty dollars. I'm now spending two and a half cents per lead, per contact information of someone who may want to buy or sell property. These people already own the type of property that I want to sell. It's not just, it's not as random actually. It's actually targeted to the exact subdivisions and condo complexes that I want to sell in. This is a never ending journey. You cannot call every property owner in your area. So I would have a, a game plan here for the ISA to conquer that subdivision, move to the next one, move to the next one, next one, next one, next one. And we're gonna be taking really good notes. We're gonna know everything going on within all the subdivisions, what happened on all the conversations. They can log all that right there on Red X. I can log into Red X, see what happened with the call sessions that day. That's where I would start if I was gonna start building a team in today's real estate world. Now that ISA, if done correctly, is gonna start generating business for me. I'm gonna start going on listing appointments, I'll be showing more properties, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna keep that train rolling, and once I get to the point, the tipping point, where I can't handle it anymore, boom, I would hire an agent. Either a listing agent or a buyer's agent, Whatever the case may be, I'm gonna hire an agent to help me with all this new business that I'm generating from my ISA. From there, as the business grew, I would hire more people, I would, I would create more roles, and we would just continue building this monster, if that's the direction I wanted to go in. But Ricky, why don't you go in that direction? You know what you need to do, you know how to do it, you know how to set expectations with the agents coming in, you understand all the philosophies and you know, you're know you coaching thousands of agents, there's probably plenty of agents that would love to be in your team. The fact is, is I love sales. It always comes back to the fact that I love sales. I don't want to manage the ISA. I don't want to manage a buyer's agent. I don't want to manage all of those people I want to be in front of the clients. I want to show property. I want to list property. I want to go to closings. I want to go to inspections. I want to do all those things. I want to negotiate the deals, all of that stuff. I don't want to take away from that. I enjoy what I do. I'm happy. 
I like it the way it is. And I'm doing over a million dollars in GCI and my expenses are extremely low. So I'm pretty happy with where I'm at right now and I'm growing in terms of my coaching business. All right, my income is a lot higher because of the coaching business on top of the million I'm making in real estate. I'm growing extra income in other ways. I'm also investing a lot. I'm gonna start creating more content around my real estate investments and I have a very nice stock portfolio. So today I just wanted to share with you what I would do if I were to build a team and hopefully that helps you if you're thinking about doing a team or if you have a team already in place. I wanna be most cost efficient, most effective. I wanna grow something that's scalable, okay? And I wanna put all the pieces of the puzzle in place that need to be in place. I want to realize that buying leads are the most inefficient thing you can do and that you can contact even better, more qualified, more targeted people, property owners, for a much, extremely cheaper price. So I hope this helps you. Please click the like button, click subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't already. Shoot me a comment, let me know what videos you want me to make, let me know what you thought about today's video, and we'll see you on the next one. Let's go!